All right, so welcome back to a slightly Christmassy A-League show. I mean, there's nothing overtly Christmas-themed about this, but it is in late December, so it's the Christmas A-League show, everyone. But today, we're here to do pretty much the usual. Aside from talking about the games last week and the upcoming matches this weekend, I'm also going to be talking about some managerial news because we got two big announcements regarding A-League managers last week. And I think they're very important to talk about. The first one is Ross Aloisi leaving Brisbane Raw to become an assistant coach under Kevin Musket at some Chinese club, which is happening immediately. Like, he's already gone, and they've got their new interim manager in charge. And it's very sad for Brisbane because... Clearly, Ross Aloisi found success. They made the cup final and they were in the top six when he left the club. And it's sad because they're not going to be... I mean, it's going to be difficult to overcome losing a manager. And it's also sad because someone would rather go be Kevin Musket's bitch in some, you know, faux communist spy state shithole um, over living in Brisbane. So that's pretty sad if that's your city, if that's your place and someone would rather go you know, suck on Kevin Musket in some shithole um, instead of manage you. That's also sad. But point is, they've they've lost him and they're probably going to fall apart. And I actually... So, who they're getting in to replace, Ross Aloisi, before we get into it, his name is Luciano Trani. It's not an LGBTQ thing. He's a 57-year-old dude. His Wikipedia page isn't sparse, but I don't think he is a tranny. Um, it's just his name. And yeah, he's he's a longtime assistant manager in the A League. He's also managed or been an assistant manager in Belgium, I think, for a season. And otherwise, he's only managed at an MPL level. But Brisbane have come out and said that he will be their interim manager till the end of the season. So yeah, it looks like they don't really have anyone who can come in and replace him, and they're just sticking with what's at the club to you know, avoid change during the season. And I don't know. I think, I just think Brisbane are going to suffer. They're two losses on the trot. They're currently sitting in fifth and there is literally a perfect, um, example of this happening with another club in recent history. Right. And I want to tell you guys, because at the moment, Brisbane Raw got to the Australia cup final to start the season. They lost. Uh, then they opened up the first nine games of the A-League with four wins, two draws, and three losses. And now they're getting rid of their manager. MacArthur last year won the Australia Cup, so they went a bit better than Brisbane, and opened up the season with four wins, two draws, and three losses. The exact same record as Brisbane now. And I'm pretty sure Dwight York stayed a bit longer than nine games, but those were the first nine games. And then Dwight York left um, sometime after that, and they ended up coming last. Like, MacArthur were off to a good start to the season, the same way Brisbane were. And I just feel like, yeah, Brisbane are going to fall apart like MacArthur did. Maybe they won't get the wooden spoon, but I can definitely see them struggling to stay in the top six for the rest of the season because... I mean, Ross Aloisi, as I said earlier, he, he was doing a good job. I feel like the direction that Brisbane were going in was really good. They were a team that was playing better than the sum of their parts. And I feel like a lot of their good players like Mile Uznic, O'Shea, um, those are the only two I can think of right now. But, you know, they, they all look to be playing really well. And I just feel like this is a big blow for Brisbane. And maybe their players are going to lose a little bit of the... Uh, the early season pizzazz. And alongside that, uh, they make a lot of errors still. Like under under Aloisi, they've made a lot of errors that have cost them games. And I just feel like with all the change going on, um, only having an interim manager, they're just going to struggle and they're likely going to fall out of the top six. So that was the big news for Brisbane. I'll talk about their game on the weekend as well briefly. But um yeah, the big news for Brisbane last week was that Ross Aloisi would be leaving the club. And I, I do feel sad for them, but it doesn't look like they're going on a manager hunt mid-season. So at least their fans know exactly where they are. Um, we'll move on to the other piece of managerial news, which is probably bigger than Ross Aloisi leaving Brisbane. But it's in regards to Auckland expansion, so we're not going to really see any results from it for 
uh, you know, nearly a year. So, yeah, it's it's um, it's not as relevant, I guess, as the Brisbane news. But it's big, is my point. Because Steve Corica has joined Auckland Expansion as their inaugural manager. Apparently, there were six candidates for the job. And Bill Foley, the owner of Auckland, came out and said that Corica was chosen because he is a proven winner plays an attractive style of football, and his philosophy is aligned with that of Auckland expansion. And, I mean, as a Sydney fan, I kind of laugh at that because I'm like, you know, I've, I've seen Corica these last couple of years and I don't think he's any of those things. But he's obviously a very successful A-League manager. Like, I mean, as a Sydney fan, it's kind of hard to say. And as just a, a fan of the A-League recently, it's hard to say. But... You know, Corica has done a lot. He has won a lot of trophies. He's probably coming back to the league as the most successful manager in the league. And he's also spoken about moving to Auckland. And he's said all the usual shit. He wants to succeed on the pitch and as a club. He wants to play attacking football. And he wants to bring through young Kiwi talent. All the stuff you'd want to hear if you're a prospective Auckland fan. But yeah, I just think that... Overall, we're going to have to really wait and see. I said it when Corica was sacked from Sydney FC or left Sydney FC, and I'll stand by it. I don't think we're going to be able to have an opinion on Steve Corica until he's managed like a full season with Auckland because thus far in his managerial career, he inherited an extremely successful Sydney FC squad and was extremely successful, and then he's been shit ever since. So... Yeah, it's going to take time to see, but he's also teaming up with Terry McFlynn, which is something I haven't really taken note of till now. So, undoubtedly, like, besides what we've seen of Corica, um, Auckland Expansion have brought in two undoubted key pieces of Sydney's successful run since 2016. Obviously, McFlynn was at Sydney FC in 2016 as... um, director of football I'm pretty sure or was it it might have been a different title but it was something along those lines and Corica was there as an assistant manager and then a manager and yeah I mean as I've said time will tell they don't have any players we don't know how any of this is going to work we don't know when they're going to start playing friendlies um we know nothing else about Auckland expansion besides the manager and the technical director and all of that like you know cursory shit but um, when the important stuff comes in, maybe I can give a prediction on Corica, but for the minute, I just think, yeah, they, they've signed two successful, um, footballing staff and that can only really be good, um, when you're building a club from scratch. But yeah, those were the big bits of managerial news. They've taken up most of this video, so we'll be quick about talking, um, through last week's games. We'll start with the Mariners who absolutely flew past Brisbane in a 3-0 display that was... Uh, I dub it as clinical because Brisbane again came out. They played decent football. They had the field position. They had possession and they couldn't convert convert any of that into chances. And when they did, they couldn't take those chances. They made errors at the back. The Mariners pounced on those errors and they got a 3-0 win. I think maybe the third goal was um, not an error, but I know the first two were. And yeah, it was just a really poor performance from Brisbane. I don't think Mariners are that good, but they've clearly got some talented and clinical players as we saw on, what was it, Friday night? And yeah, they... they no, it was Thursday night. And yeah, anyway, they, they came away with a win. Then Adelaide smashed Newcastle at home. It was a very comprehensive win from Adelaide. Adelaide. They just looked miles better than Newcastle, in my opinion, and the three points have helped them stay in the top six. Then, the game that I missed looked like the most awesome game because uh, for 90 minutes, it it looked like an exciting enough game. Um, there were two disallowed goals for Wellington that I think were clearly not goals, and there was, I think, two big saves from Paulson as well. Um, I'm not sure what the stats were for this game, but it looked rather even from the highlights. And then, at the end, Costa Barbarousas with what I would also describe as a legendary performance. You know, I gave praise to Bruno Fall and Rowley last week for four goals. What about Barbarousas? Right before Christmas, he, he rocks up with a goal and an assist in the fucking stoppage time to uh to get wellington a 2-0 win against western sydney and put them top of the league uh it's absolutely insane it looked like scenes and wellington who have been shithousing results all year uh seem to have done it again absolutely not saying they didn't deserve it i'm just saying 
to save it till the end is hilarious and I love it. And uh, yeah, massive, massive congratulations to Wellington on being top of the league. It's uh, it's quite refreshing and exciting to see. And uh, we'll talk about Sydney FC next, but you know, as it's not really looking like we're going to do much this season, um, I, I wish Will- Wellington the best of luck in their pursuit of the Premier's plate. So um, yeah, fantastic from them. Uh, and then Sydney FC beat Western United 4-2. It was a weird game. It was a shit game, but it was an entertaining game and it proved that Sydney FC had life. Fabio Gomez got another goal. It was a poacher's finish. He just stuck his leg out, flicked it on goal and it went in. Then Joe Lolly got all the time in the world to score an absolute banger. Jack Rodwell back from injury scored a header and then Lolly scored a second goal after a lovely switch from Bratton to, uh, seal the match but other than that and I think we we pressed well throughout the game and we moved the ball forward quickly we're still looking like at least when we're able to we we look like we're trying to play you know the style of football that we want to play and it's consistent and that's lovely um but we did have problems as well we were open at the back we were quite sloppy at times even going forward and I don't know I feel like there was definitely a lot left uh wanting in that performance especially when you consider how nothing went Western United were against us like they had a few chances they probably could have scored some more goals but really it felt like Weston weren't doing anything and we were just a bit sloppy and open and that kind of let us down I mean like also just quickly if you look at that first goal I've been saying we've got defensive communication issues look at that first goal there's like four of them standing next to each other like they're posing for an album cover just like confused as to how we can see to the open header at the back stick but Overall, we got the three points. That's what we needed. Western United are sadly close to us on the table. And a win against them puts us three points ahead of them with a massive goal difference, you know, differential towards us. So, um, yeah, it it keeps us away from the bottom. And we're also four points off the top six. So it'll take a lot of work to get back in. But we're in a position to do so still. Uh, And then following this game, there was the Melbourne derby. Uh, There were no buckets thrown, so I don't think it was that eventful, but it looked like a fantastic atmosphere. I did the uh, derby rankings video, and a lot of people spoke highly of the Melbourne derby. Um, Obviously, the Melbourne City TIFO got clowned a bit, but other than that, uh, it looked like a terrific turnout. Melbourne victory, as they've done many times this season, looked the better side in that game, but... They couldn't convert. McLaren nearly scored the winner late, but it was deemed to have been a foul in the build-up, and it was chalked off. And yeah, Melbourne Derby ended nil-nil. Boring as fuck scoreline, but looked a decent enough match. And then, to end the weekend, MacArthur were brought down a peg by the mighty Perth Glory. And I speak highly of Wellington. I say how lovely it is when they do well. And look, I dislike Perth a lot more than I dislike Wellington, but I do have a a bit of a soft spot for Perth, mainly because they're usually crap. And that win on Saturday night was awesome. Uh, David Williams obviously got the winner late, but Ivanovic got on the scoreline as well. MacArthur were 2-0 up. I didn't really watch this match. I was quite tired after Sydney FC and the Melbourne derby. Um, but I I did see bits of it. And yeah, it just looked like phenomenal work for Perth to come back. It looked like scenes at the end. And I think in summation, that's, that's what we, we did see some pretty good scenes this weekend in the A-League because... Um, the Sydney atmosphere was awesome. Like, I, I always lament the fact that our, like, sidelines are quiet as fuck and really boring. But they were into that game on the weekend. Like, there was noise coming from the sidelines, which was quite exciting. I know it's not, you know, the active that everyone wants. But, um, yeah, it's atmosphere and it's it's positive. I think it's an improvement on recent weeks. So, that was exciting. Wellington is always awesome. And they got, you know, an epic win really so there would have been scenes there uh the melbourne derby obviously a massive game and then yeah perth with a comeback win to um to get or stay off the bottom of the table and um yeah it just looked like their fans were super happy so well done to perth and uh yeah well done to everyone i think the a-league overall is just it's it's looking positive like i think there's a lot of problems with it i want to talk about some of those (laughs) paramount but um yeah overall i feel like it's it's very much a a compelling football league to watch as a fan and um yeah i was just very happy with all the games on the weekend they made me um 
made made me pff, happy. Yeah, and don't don't think I need another word to describe them. Uh, anyway, let's move on to next weekend, which I also hope makes me happy. It starts with Melbourne City versus Brisbane Raw, and I am absolutely taking Melbourne City here. I know they've looked crap this season. They'll probably look crap again, but they're at Amy Park. Brisbane are coming off two losses in a row. They've lost their manager. I've said they're going to fall apart. Melbourne City will be taking the win. Then we've got Sydney FC versus Wellington, who are top of the table. And this one worries me a bit because Sydney FC have not been good this season. Like, we've had our moments, but Wellington have been a side that's virtually unbeatable. They suffered that 3-0 loss to Newcastle um, a couple of weeks back, but otherwise, they've just played a very high quality of football. They've been hard to beat, and they've been clinical, and that's going to be a problem for Sydney FC. So, instead of, like, dancing around and being like, oh, if Joe Lolly scores 15 bangers, then it's really likely we'll win. I, I'm just going to say, I, 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 I vibe this. I feel like, over the course of supporting Sydney FC, dis late, late December, early January games have some of the best atmospheres at home, and we're going to use our atmosphere on the 29th of December, far removed from any Christmas Eve or New Year's Eve celebrations or Christmas celebrations. I feel like we're going to have an all-time atmosphere, and we're going to beat Wellington while they're at top of the table. Um, hopefully, Melbourne victory lose to Adelaide, so... Um, so they don't go top. But yeah, we'll talk about that in a sec because there's Newcastle Jets versus Western United. Western United are absolutely shit. Newcastle aren't absolutely shit and they've got a striker that's somewhat clinical. So they will be beating Western United again. Then Melbourne victory versus Adelaide is on Saturday night and I'm excited for this one because original rivalry. Who doesn't want to watch an original rivalry match? It's at Amy Park again. The last one was heated. Iran Kunda should be back. And uh, yeah, you know what? I think Melbourne victory are still going to fuck up Adelaide. Uh, since the last one, Adelaide were flying going into the last one. They had got, what, 10-0 aggregate win in the first two rounds of the A-League, um, and then they drew with Melbourne victory. Adelaide have been mediocre since. Melbourne victory have dropped a lot of points, but they've they've been quite good when they've been good. And I feel like they're one of the better sides in this league. And I just think that after a nil nil in the Derby and, you know, probably deserving a win, they're going to come out against Adelaide and put a couple past them. So yeah, I'll tip Melbourne victory for the original rivalry. Then we've got Mariners versus Perth glory. The, the annual new year's Eve fixture up on the central coast. And you know what? I think the Mariners are shit. I think Perth is shit. I know Perth actually, they're both coming off great wins but i think just with the home advantage mariners will get the win and then to end off the round and kick off the new year we have western sydney wanderers taking on macarthur uh this is actually a very exciting match i think that wanderers probably look the better side but macarthur have a bit of explosiveness about them that could make this interesting honestly we're gonna have to wait and see but as someone who loves the world and wants it to be a happy place, I'll have to tip MacArthur winning this game. And I'll, I'll go... Oh, fuck, I didn't even do score predictions. I'll, okay, I just won't do them this weekend. Yeah, I'll go MacArthur winning this game. Um, and yeah, that's the fucking Christmas A-League show. Um, I was trying not to swear. If, if you didn't... I, I, I mean, I just remembered I should have been trying not to swear. But um, I, I think I did plenty of time so we'll, we'll have to wait and see but guys i hope you have enjoyed this i hope you've been enjoying the videos so far this season i fully intend to keep them up for the rest of the year we've got unite round coming up so hopefully i can do some fucking vlogger content around that and um otherwise yeah i'll, I'll see you next time i do an a-league show bye-bye